What's up guys, Inigami here, and I hear you guys have been having trouble with NS Lobby Part 2, so we're going to go through and make a quick walkthrough video for every single one of the bosses. We're going to do something a little differently. I'm going to put all the bosses here in this one video, and we're just going to show you the team that we're using and then skip to the end. First we have Mini Boss Kumidori. Mini Boss Kumidori will preemptively lock one random character for two turns, and he has 450,000 hit points. Pretty easy. You can take him out not too long. With Kumidori in general, you want to use a pretty heavy int team. I don't think I'll kill him right here. Yep, he's alive. Abandon all hope. Bind someone else. Once again. Under 20%, he does ban someone for 5 turns. And Omuyakun! Thank you so much for the 3 months, dude. Stop talking so I can kill you, please. For boss Kumadori, he has 800,000 hit points. He attacks for 3k every turn. Below 50% he'll attack for 5k hit points every turn. He puts up a depot protection for one turn, which isn't too hard to deal with. And he has percent damage reduction for any non-int characters. So int characters get their damage uh, regular attacks. Non-int characters have their damage reduced. What we're going to do is we're just going to take the first hit hit him and then use our both our Mihawks and start hitting him after that. Below 50% he will clear debuffs. So depending on how hard you hit, we can use Mr. One and then use Golem Hunt Usopp after that. Woo. Ow, 3k. So really all you want to do is bring some heavy, uh, pretty heavy on the int characters for this stage. Uh, below 20% he will lock 3 random units for 2 turns. And I think I can just kill him. Yeah, I can just kill him. Slash slash. Mr. One just for the damage boost. And even though we have a bad orb on Croc. I'll either kill him or get to see my characters locked. Yeah, locking my characters. Oh, never mind. He doesn't do it while he's not attacking. True strats. Less than 5k hit points. There you go. That's Kumidori down. Let's move on to Fukuro on chapter 5. Fukuro has 160,000 hit points. Not that much, but he does reduce the damage from non-quick characters to zero. That's completely nullified, you can tell, because it's the golden uh, shield. If you were on Japan, you could click on it and tell you what it does. Global does not. Uh, it reduces all damage from non-quick characters in two turns. I'm currently blinded from one of the earlier stages. That blind is not a mechanic for this stage. Uh, he attacks for 50,000 damage every two turns, and then below 20% he attacks for 10,000 damage. Boosts his offense to 10k uh, for two turns, also under 20%. So really all you do is avoid the 20%. All I'm going to do right here is get rid of my orbs. See if I get some better stuff and just burst them in one turn. Uh, 160,000 health is not really much. And you can always use Golden Pound Usopp still to delay him even more. And I can use Ivankov to see if I can get some better orbs. Give me something good, Ivankov! Yes, it's the, the big strength cannoneer guys that like to reduce your... Like to reduce your... I like to blind you when they get low on health. And rock Gaku. So, as long as you're bringing mostly quick characters to this stage, piece of cake. He's really, the Kumidori really is there for teams that don't have very heavy. Um, I'm sorry, I said 1.6k health, didn't I? He has 1.6 million health. It's a little different. Right? I think that was. Boom. Boom. Just avoid his 20% health. Thanks to double and L specials. And with a double and L team, you can stall for. Yeah, it's 100, 160k hit points on Fukuro. 
just bring a heavy quick team if you have an L's double an L makes it really really easy if you don't have an L uh, you can use Ace, you can use either a Rob Lucci Captain. Just make sure you avoid the 20%. And if you have even an, one Anel friend, should be able to heal up past damage, no problemo. Uh, and for Kuro himself, not super useful. His uh, special reduces damage taken by 50% for one turn. And eh, you, can, you can pass on farming him. Next, we have Khalifa on stage 7. Stage 7 is Khalifa. She will uh, preemptively nullify or reduce damage taken from non uh, strength units by 85%. You're starting to see a pattern here. So, all the uh, attacks of our non strength units, of course, Mihawk and Golden Hunt Gusev are only non strength units, but they're reduced quite significantly. Our regular strength units are just fine. Just keep a mostly strength team. And she has 1 million hit points, attacks for 3.4k every turn, preemptively attacks one time for 3.4k. So be very careful if you're using a double monster chopper team, you don't want to just die here. Um, and below 50% she'll put up a debuff protector for 5 turns and remove special effects. So if you have Golden Punk Usopp, use her early. You can save your Mihawks for later on if you want to burst her. Um, I'm probably just going to kill her pretty quickly. So I'll, I'll just use Mihawk here. We'll see if we can get away with it. Of course, if in, uh, you can use a full strength team or you can swap out Mihawk for a Doflamingo. A Doflamingo is probably your best bet to really get your bang for your buck. But if you're bringing a gear 3 friend, a million health really isn't that much. Piece of cake. Khalifa herself is a pretty useful special. Uh, or moderately useful. Let me not say pretty useful. Moderately useful special. It he uh, heals and shuffles your orbs. The heal is six times her recovery every turn for three turns. And I believe she has 300 recoveries. So it's, it's a decent amount of healing with a shuffle ability, which is always useful. So, and maybe for the, how useful she is. Jabra has about 1 million health. He will preemptively boost his attack and defense for seven turns. Uh, he attacks for 8.3k every three turns, and below 20% he boosts that attack to 15,000 damage. Below 50% he will reduce the attack of non psi characters by 90%, and puts up a debuff protection once again. You see the you see the same pattern over and over. We are going to go ahead and move two orbs. Yeah. We'll use Frankie. We'll use Frankie and, and Kobe now. Frankie! Let us move orbs around. Move that here. Move that here. Impact Al Usopp. Kobe, and then we can use Sengoku next turn too. Another team that works well for this stage is uh, Frankie and Strong Shanks, or Garp and Strong Shanks both work great too. Oops, I missed a perfect. I'm sorry, I'm bad. Uh, Jabra is actually a pretty good character. Jabra's captain ability boosts the attack and health of int characters by 1.5 and deals 9 exact damage at the end of each turn. Now, 9 exact damage is not really good enough to get you through like Princess Turtles or regular turtle time, but it is kind of useful for some of those stages. If you're doing regular turtle time, a uh, double Jabra team actually works out pretty well until you get to the Elder Turtle. Uh, and his special reduces your health by 99% and deals that amount of damage back to the enemies in int damage and boosts the attack of int characters by 1.5. So his special works if you don't have a version 1 Robin. His special also works out well if you do not, or if you're using a Whitebeard or Croc Captain or something like that. Something that likes to be at low health. So Jabra, overall, actually a pretty decent unit. For Kaku, you're gonna get a mini boss Kaku on stage four. He will, uh, he has 450k hit points and attacks for 2.5k every turn. If you're using a double Anel team, you really don't even need to worry at all. He does put a slight defense boost himself, but with double Anel, you can easily outheal him. 
Oh no! Kaku, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So I could spend some time here installing with the double and L team. Double and L once again is really great. If you don't have an L, you can just stick to what other other quick captains do you have? Just highly recommend that you can bring an Anel friend if at all possible. Super easy. Boss Kaku has 1.2 million health. He will preemptively put up debuff protection and boost his defense to 10k once again. Ba -da -ba -da. It is for two turns each. He will attack first for 5k and then for 2.9k every turn after that. And 8.7k when below 20% health. So. All I'm going to do is use my Hina to lock everything and use my Kaku. Just attack this turn and then use Anel next turn. Don't want to use Anel turn 1 because then we'll uh, not have a good time after taking a hit from him. Of course if you can just kill him, like I, I can just use Anel and kill him, but since I brought Hina I'm just going to use Hina because I don't get to use her effect too often. It's always fun to save your orbs for two turns in a row. Draft Blast! Blaster pass. Bla blaster power. Not sure what I was saying there. Um, but yes, if you're just using a double and L team, very, very easy to beat Kaku. Uh, you can always bring only an NL friend and other characters as subs. But a double and L team works best. Kaku is a pretty useful character. He has he is the same character as Kaku from Water 7. You can just now the evolve the Water 7 Kaku into either the strength form or the quick form. This Kaku will it does drop as the quick Kaku. You can either drop, evolve it to the 4 star quick or the 5 star strength version. Both are pretty decent orb manipulators. Use whichever one you need more orb manipulating from. Spandam on chapter 11 uh he will put up a resilience buff on himself for 5 turns, and he has 5 dudes around him that are all pretty tough. The easiest thing to do is to use a special to kill him. You can use full body, you can use anything that deals damage. Uh, I'm going to use Perona special to kill him this turn. So Perona special will take care of him no problem, because Perona does poison for 1000 damage. And then we'll just take our attacks and try to kill the guys on the outside. And since we already have Perona buff... I might as well see if I can just take a hit here and just kill the other things. Bookoo! Uh, if you do not kill Pan uh, Spandam like that, if you let Spandam attack you below 20% health, he will hit you for 10,000 damage. So. Don't don't let Spandam attack you. It's not really an ideal situation. But once Spandam's down, the rest of the characters fall pretty easily. Spandam's bad. Don't get him. Stage four of chapter twelve has Rob Lucci mini boss. The Rob Lucci mini boss will attack for should be five thousand damage every turn, or every two turns with a one turn start. He has significantly less health than his other version, five hundred thousand health or so. So if you get some decent orbs, try and get some good orbs on your Miha Slash team and take them down there. Uh, make sure with all Rob Luchis that you avoid them below 30% health, because 30% health is where they do their bad stuff, not 20% health. For Chapter 12, Rob Lucci will preemptively hit you for 5,000 damage and shuffle all your orbs, giving you bother orbs and other stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, he, he does one third of your current health, not... 5,000 damage. He attacks every two turns for 5,000 damage. Uh, below 30% health, he will lock two random units and silence our captain for two turns. Uh, two random units for two turns. And he deals 8,000 damage uh, below 30% health. So really want to make sure we don't get him below 30%. So we're just going to take uh, attack him normally for the first two turns. Let him get a little bit lower. Take a hit to the face. And then after his debuff protection is gone, and after we get some better orbs, that is some seriously terrible orbs. 
Then we will use both our Mihawks and our Doflamingo and our Double Finger. Burst him down. There we go. Uh, still no great orbs. So we'll just do a regular attack here and leave the Double Finger orb. Remember, it is 30% health, which is about the edge of his hat, if you're looking at him right now. Use, uh, you can also use Golem Hunt Usopp, and that will... Uh, he will not hurt you if you use Golem Hunt Usopp. So that's a safe way to not die. Do Flamingo. Shuffle Orbs. Double Finger. Boost dex damage. Go and hunt Usopp just in case I somehow have a, have a stroke halfway through my attack. Then we'll still live. And then he falls quite easily. The real, real trick for Rob Lucci is just make sure he does not have 30%, does not hit that 30% health number. He has about 1 million health on this stage. Chapter 14, we have mini boss Rob Lucci on stage 5. He will shuffle our orbs, give us bother orbs, and boost his defense to 10,000 damage. He will attack for 5,000 damage. Uh, I think I'm sorry, he attacks for 2.4k. And he has 800,000 health, so we're just going to. We're not going to use any specials here. We're just gonna hit him without getting him below 20%. Boom, boom, boom. Every single turn for 2.4k. If you have a double finger, you can actually use double finger, and I may, uh, just because double finger's cooldown is pretty short. Double finger only has a, uh, once max out, she has a 8 turn cooldown. So pretty nice. I'm gonna just kill him next turn without Double Finger Special, but Double Finger Special does work great right here. All oh, right, Rob Lucci is below 30%. What am I thinking of? Boo! Rob Lucci, when you get him below 30%, will uh, reduce your current health by 90%. So I just, I just really want to play the game on a more difficult. Difficult saying, that's all. Let's go to Boss Rob Lucci. For Boss Rob Lucci on Chapter 14, he will once again preemptively swap all our orbs to bother orbs or empty orbs, and he will deal one third of our current health in damage. So he will go down. Uh, he will deal two thirds of our health. Will go down to one third of our health. No, we go down to two thirds of our health. Sorry, he deals one third of our health. Um, below 50%, he will enrage, which means he will. Uh, attack every single turn, but once again, Rob Lucci's bad stuff happens at 50 uh, at 30 percent. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attack turn one to get rid of some orbs. Hopefully, look for some Dex orbs. Then we'll use our Do Flamingo. We'll use our Mihawk. We'll use our Double Finger. We'll use everything and Golden Pound for safety. Safety, safety first. Rob Lucci here has 1.78 million health. So baboom. Baboon. Double finger. And with double fairing Doflamingo, easily have more than enough health to kill him. And Zoro, because I mean, why not? So if you get Rob Lucci below 30% uh, health, he will lock three units for uh, one turn and reduce your current health by 99%. Move that here and move this here. Why not? Let's rock and roll. Rob Lucci is the same Rob Lucci as Water 7 once again. So if you do not have a Rob Lucci from War 7, you can get him from here. Since he shows up twice, you do actually get two chances of Rob Lucci's on both Chapter 14 and Chapter 12. Uh, doesn't really matter which one you farm him on, I don't believe. Uh, chapter 14, I know for sure he does drop twice. Uh, that is the entirety 
of the Linus Lobby Part 2. Every single important fight, hopefully that helped you. Free to play teams for everything. Pretty much every single character, you just use a team that works against their weakness. And besides that, just make sure you don't... You, you burst them down for the last half of them, pretty much work for all of them. I haven't seen you got me. Good luck with your NS Lobby Part 2. Whew, that took a little while. Y'all stay beautiful. Oh, and this is officially the death of the Thousand Sun. You gotta skip all that because I wanna. I mean, official, officially the death of the Merry Go. We get our Rainbow Gems, we get our Frankie, we get our Thousand Sunny. No, I wanna see the Thousand Sunny. Thousand Sunny, Thousand Sunny. Yeah! And the best part is that now all our loading screens are now replaced by the Thousand Sunny. Check out that. Yay, now we got the Thousand Sunny in the bottom right hand corner instead of the Merry Go. R.I.P. Merry Go. Long live the Thousand Sunny. I've been Zigami. Good luck with your Thousand Sunny. Thousand Sunny basically completely replaces the Merry Go. Just straight up better. Y'all stay beautiful.